hearing? I mean, would you echo that? I mean, I'm hearing that the the turnover is is the surprise of the turnover is the problem, right? If if Twitter had come out in the beginning of the year and said we are going to shuffle through our top ranks and come up, come up with a new plan, a new focus, and you know make it make it cohesive. People would say, okay, we get it, we get it, we understand what the plan is. But some of these things have just been surprising, um, like Ali Rogani leaving earlier this year. The CFO changeover was a surprise to people, um, and the engineers that left just earlier this week. So it keeps going, and the market doesn't like to be surprised. And the question now is, is this going to cont continue? Because we all thought it was over when, when Ali left and when they got a new CFO. Ryan, how problematic is it from your perspective that so many changes keep on happening? You know, I think what's important is making sure you get the team right, you get your go forward team right to build the best thing you can and not react to kind of what the market thinks you should be doing. Um, and so I think in the end, that's what they're focused on and that's what they think is, is the right move and, and they're not trying to react to what the market is expecting of them. And I think Kevin's the right guy to kind of align those things and build the right team. He and Alex have worked together for a very long time. Alex is running all of engineering. Kevin's going to run all of products. And I think Twitter's at a point now where they need to make some really bold decisions on the product side. And you need someone who's kind of an insider, who's been there for a long time, has respect of the entire company, to go make those bold choices and lead people into places they you know, weren't expecting they were going to go. And I think Kevin and Alex are the, the right two guys to go do that. I spoke with Twitter CEO Dick Costello earlier this week and talked about the management changes, the management evolution is what he called it. Take a listen to what he had to say. Management teams grow and evolve and change over time, and I think that is always the case. I love the team we have in place. We've developed all sorts of tremendous leaders across the company. Sarah, you know, what has been your impression of, you know, morale at Twitter, culture at Twitter right now as all of this stuff has been happening? I think people want to want to rally around a solid direction, right? And when you have a lot of changes in management, it's hard to know what that direction is. Of course, Twitter says we have a plan. We had this plan before we even hired Daniel Graf. It's going to roll out. You're going to see these changes, but we have yet to really see from the consumer side what that looks like. So there hasn't been that much that that we've noticed just as users of Twitter that has changed and and it'll happen but um, you know until it does happen I think investors are still going to be a little bit skeptical of, of what go, what goes on in Twitter products. You know Dick Costolo, Ryan as I understand it you know he's incredibly well regarded obviously a lot of pressure on him right now. Why shouldn't we be concerned about all of these changes happening at Twitter. I mean the product lots of criticism that the product hasn't really evolved. It, you know why not. Yeah. I mean, I think that you know, the reason that you still want to be excited about this is, again, about getting the right people in place to lead the team going forward. I think Kevin and Alex are the right guys to go do it. I think you heard Dick say in his uh, earnings report that he felt like he wanted the team's execution to get faster. And I think those are guys you've seen on the revenue side. The revenue side has grown and executed incredibly well. The platform under Kevin's leadership has grown and executed fabric. So I think you're going to see a higher urgency level on the rest of the company and they feel like these are the guys to go do that. So uh, I'm, I'm not worried about the future. I'm really excited about where they're heading. I think it's a really, really good move on their part. Where would you like to see the product go? I mean, there's been discussion of, of, of things as dramatic as getting rid of usernames. I mean, what would you like to see Twitter do the next six to 12 months? Yeah, that's a good question. I think, you know, everyone's talked about it, but I think it's about growth. You know, Twitter is a product I think could be valuable to a billion plus users around the world. It's real-time information on a mobile device. Everyone has mobile devices now. And I think that's valuable to everybody. And the thing they need to cross is that chasm between hearing about Twitter and truly understanding what the product is and what that value is to you. And I hope to see the team really focus on kind of marketing and explaining that value and then building a product around, you know, delivering that value to users as quickly as possible. You know, it's easy to say it's really hard to do. If it were easy, it would have been solved by now. Um, but I think it's about getting that focus and getting that alignment so that all parts of the organization are pulling towards that one effort. Okay, Sarah Fryer, Bloomberg News. Ryan Sarver, former Twitter director of Platform Now at Red Point Ventures. Ryan, always great to have you here on the show. Thank you. Well, new tech products and services are launching all the time in San Francisco. So how should the government be involved in regulating these services and protecting consumers? That's just one topic we'll discuss with San Francisco District Attorney George Gascon when Bloomberg West returns.